Hello, let's go through some important rules in punctuation. This is very, very important for an impressive writing because it helps the reader to understand the exact meaning as intended. So in this video, we would go through different punctuation marks, their usage with the help of examples so that you can you know, write correct sentences and use these you know, punctuation marks at the right place in your sentences. In speaking, we use pauses and we use intonation where the pitch of the voice increases or decreases to convey our meaning. Punctuation plays a similar role in writing. We should use correct and appropriate punctuation all the time because it will make it easier for the reader to understand exactly what we want to communicate. There are different punctuation marks which could be used in the sentence. Commas, full stop, semicolons, colon, quotation marks, parentheses and brackets, apostrophes, hyphens, dashes, question marks, exclamation mark and slashes. Now breaking the rules or using inappropriate punctuation will affect our text in much the same way as incorrect spellings or usage of inappropriate vocabulary. So the usage of these punctuation marks is very, very important in a sentence, in a paragraph, because it basically explains the reader the connectivity between the words in a sentence. If you do not punctuate your sentences, the reader will not understand where to stop, which, you know, which sentence starts where. So all these punctuation marks have their own role to play. They are significant and you cannot write impressively or get a good band without using these. Now let's start with a colon. A colon is a type of punctuation that comes before an ex uh, explanation, description or definition. It depicts a greater pause than that expressed by the semicolon. For example, a little learning is a dangerous thing. So before this, I also have to talk about the person who said the quote. So therefore, I, the name of the person is followed by a colon. Alexander Pope says, and there's a colon, a little learning is a dangerous thing, which means that the phrase after the colon is basically a description of what this person says. So this clause, you know, refers to the wordings which were quoted by Alexander Pope. So that's how we try to depict with the help of a colon. Okay, now let's look at another example. He got what he worked for. And then you try to explain it in the latter part of the sentence using a colon. He really earned that promotion. So that's what you do. The clause or the phrase after the colon is an explanation or the description of the group of words before the colon. Now, the main ways to use colon is they can emphasize certain points or details. They can explain something in a more descriptive way. A sentence with a colon generally follows the form independent clause plus colon plus description or explanation. There are some minor and more technical things in writing where we need colons as well. For example, while writing a letter or an email when I say dear sir or madam and I put a, comal, a colon and it is followed by to the parents and students of you know, Springfield Middle School. So you can use a colon at the end of a greeting to whom it may concern, which you know, anyways means the same that your description is followed after the colon. So similarly, while you are, you know, writing some hours and minutes, especially in American English, you can use a colon. I have a doctor's appointment at 10 colon zero zero. Okay, now let's look at the second most important punctuation mark, which is, you know, comma. The comma is used to show a separation of ideas or elements within the structure of a sentence. You could use it for direct address. Thanks for all your consideration, comma, Jack, which means Jack is a continuation. Of, I mean, you know, Jack is the person whom you are addressing it to. Then separation of two complete sentences. Although she left her home early, she could not reach on time and miss the presentation. So here I have two clauses and I'm separating the clauses using a comma. Sometimes, you know, a comma is also used to separate lists or elements. Sam ordered a black, comma, green and blue pen for his report writing. Okay, now let's look at a few more examples to understand the concept of how commas are used. Disappointed, comma, we left the party before it ended. So I'm actually beginning my sentence with 
with an expression with an you know so i am separating it with the latter part of the sentence annoyed the manager went back to his cabin so annoyed is an expression which is used for the manager so we are separating it using a comma then we are we also use comma to separate the phrases expecting the words we liquidated most of our savings so expecting the words has no subject it's a phrase we liquidated most of our savings is a clause is an independent you know clause so we are separating a phrase with a clause using a you know comma then you could use it to separate two independent clauses or two two different clauses if we carefully plan the execution of targets we can increase the sales and we separating the clauses using a comma in this you have a subordinating conjunction it's a complex sentence and a complex sentence is made of clauses so which is separated by using a comma similarly there is no comma if subordinate clauses are placed after the independent clause we can increase the sales if we plan the execution of targets carefully so here since we change the placement of the clause we don't need a comma anymore and it forms one complete sentence okay now we can also use a comma with you know a pos uh, a and a positive is a word or a group of words that immediately follows a noun or a pronoun for example rambo won the prize a fully paid vacation to the hawaii so this whole group of words after the comma is an explanation to the word you know pr uh, a prize similarly you know paris the fashion capital of the world so this whole phrase the fashion capital of the world is an explanation or is an elaboration to the word paris is one of my favorite cities so we separate these two clauses using uh, clauses or phrases using a comma now actually this is a complex sentence which can be broken down into two simple sentences like you know paris is the fashion capital of the world paris is one of my favorite cities and i combine it to form a complex sentence and then i uh, use commas to separate my group of words now let's look at some more examples my father who is still farming is 82 years old now this can be also written into two sentences my father is 82 years old and my father is still farming but i combine it to make a complex sentence and i separate it with a comma so if it is removed from the sentence the basic meaning of the sentence is not changed but this is just to indicate that my father is a common subject which is used with both the you know uh, phrases now let's see where we use the word full stop now full stop is uh, is actually this word is called period but it is used as a you know full stop in british english it is placed at the end of declarative sentences so it basically indicates the end of a sentence so having a full stop is mandatory otherwise the examiner may not know that where is the sentence ending and with no full stop and too many subjects and verbs he will not be able to develop that connectivity between the words and you may get very less points on with respect to you know cohesion and coherence now your full stop can also be used with abbreviations mp uno etc so as a sentence ends you you will have to use full stop and also with an abbreviation as i just discussed now it is also used after a single word like goodbye stop it is also used with numbers 10.43 14.17 now let's look at how ellipses are used ellipses as you can see when a sentence concludes with three dots it indicates that only part of the sentence or text has been quoted and that it is being left up to the reader to complete the thought so we can look at some examples he's always late but you know how i feel about that and you just put three dots because you know the reader or the listener to understand your feelings and probably he already has an idea about it so you just leave it incomplete with three dots that's mainly an informal way of writing it doesn't work like that in your formal or semi formal writings now let's understand where question mark is used it's a punctuation symbol which is placed at the end of a sentence or phrase to indicate a direct questions are you happy to be home so it's a question mark hally have you done your homework why is the sky blue so all these questions are making an inquiry or to ask something and they end with the question mark now let's look at semicolon semicolon is a punctuation mark that separates major sentence elements for example 
you have a sentence the people present were jammy a man from new zealand now a man from new zealand is a description of the person jammy then you have a semicolon because you are talking about another person john the milkman's son and then you talk about another person george a gaunt kind of man with no friends so can you see how your punctuation marks are used when you're talking about the same person jammy in a little bit detailed use a comma and then when you talk when you are talking about somebody else so it's basically separating the items in a list then you use a semicolon and then use it further with the third name which is george similarly several fast food restaurants can be found within the following cities and then you you use a colon which is followed by the name of the cities london comma england then you have semicolon paris comma france and then you have semicolon then you have dublin you know ireland then you have semicolon so which means you are separating different items in a list you know particularly when the elements of that list contain commas let's take up some more examples you can use it between closely related independent clauses my wife would like tea i would prefer coffee so there are two different independent sentences but it is with respect to the same context therefore you are using it in the same sentence but you've used a semicolon now you could use this you know in a clause in uh, this is you know especially common when your parallel wording is omitted from the second ted has two dogs semicolon sam one okay so maybe sam is one of them when you are not trying to complete the sentence you would probably use a semicolon i have no use for this he said and semicolon you are welcome to it so when you are trying to you know connect two different sentences when a quotation links two independent sentences you would use a semicolon because it is because you are making only one sentence and not two different sentences now let's look at the usage of the word apostrophe which is at times very very confusing for the native english speakers apostrophes serve two basic functions they show possession and indicate letters which have been removed to form a contraction for example when i say boy's book which mean the book belongs to the boy for example amy's ballet class so it's her class lisa's car that means that one person thing owns or is a member of something that car belongs to lisa the car belongs to robert the room is ross so that's how you use it which means possessive you possess it now let's understand the difference between ross and comma that means you are probably writing the plural of ross and you just put a comma but when you say ross comma s which means this is single person and you're putting an apostrophe it makes no difference whether the item on the singular or plural we use ross to say that the room singular is his and that the sports item plural are his use an apostrophe after the s for example parents bedroom now here it's a plural parents so you will just put an apostrophe after s but you will not put s again but if it is singular like uh, parent then you will write you know parent apostrophe s bedroom but for a plural you don't write an s you just put an apostrophe but for a singular you put apostrophe s smith's lives it's not necessary to add another s to the end of a possessive plural noun that was a possessive singular noun but this is a possessive plural noun if a plural noun doesn't end in s add an apostrophe plus s to create the possessive form now let's take up some examples you also use apostrophe when you want to combine two words to make a contraction like they have you've changed it to they have or are plus not aren't they plus will they'll similarly i am now english apostrophe rules are not difficult to master all possessive need an apostrophe and an s at the end if the word already has an s it only needs an apostrophe if the word does not already have an s it needs an apostrophe followed by s for example boys that means single boy boys so that means it belongs to a number of boys child it belongs to a child children's that means it belongs to a number of children okay now quotation marks we use quotation marks with direct co uh, quotes with titles of certain works for example john said 
I really hate when it's hot outside. So it's normally used for direct speech, which is not the way. I mean, we do not encourage direct speech in your writings and speakings for any competitive exam. And you can rephrase this to write into indirect speech. John said he hated when it was hot outside. But when you write in quotation marks, you are probably quoting a group of words which were you know, spoken much before. But you would quote it as it is in just the uh, same way as they were spoken. Now let's try to understand exclamation mark. Exclamation point is usually used after an exclamation or interjection. And this is used to express your emotions. Stop, he yelled. You've got two flat tires. Get off my lawn. This is just to express your emotion. You could use it in different ways, informal writing. And it, this is normally in direct speech. So we do not use exclamation marks for any formal, semi-formal writings or speakings. Now let's try to understand hyphens. Hyphen is a punctuation mark that's used to join words or part of words. It's not interchangeable with other types of dashes. Use a hyphen in a compound modifier when the modifier comes before the word it's modifying. For example, if I talk about it's recommended, you don't take down any load-bearing walls when renovating. So when I say load-bearing walls, the word load-bearing is describing the walls. So there has to be an hyphen, which means this these two words is you know taken as one compound word which is an adjective used to describe the word walls. But if you want to rephrase, you can probably, you know, rephrase it at walls which are load bearing and there you need not put any hyphen. Similarly, this rock hard cake. So this is a word. It's a compound word which is describing the word cake. Similarly, we're looking for a dog friendly hotel. So we're using hyphen here because it is describing the hotel. Now, if you do not want to put an hy uh, hyphen, you will probably have to change the sentence because now it's not a compound word. They are two different words. If the noun comes first, leave the hyphen out. This wall is load-bearing. It's impossible to eat this cake because it is rock hard. Now, it is not a compound word. It, they are two different words. Is this hotel dog friendly? And because your noun comes first, it's you will not use hyphen anymore because now it is no more an adjective that is describing that noun. You also don't need a hyphen when your modifier is made up of an adverb or an adjective. For example, do you expect me to believe this clearly impossible story? The word clearly, uh, you know, clearly impossible is not an adjective which is describing the word story. They're two different words. Clearly is about believe, which is an adverb. Impossible is an adjective, which is about the word story. So there are two different words made of adverb and adjective. So they cannot be compound. It is not a compound you know, modifier. There are two different words. Now let's look at your slashes. There are two types of slashes, a backslash and a forward slash. The backslash is used only for computer coding. The forward slash, often simply referred to as a slash, is a punctuation mark used in English. The only time it is appropriate to use a comma after a slash is when, when you are demonstrating breaks between lines of poetry, songs, or plays. Now how would you separate the lines in a prose? Mary had a little lamb, slash little lamb, little lamb. So here you're trying to show the breaks or indicate when leaving the classroom, the teacher noticed that a student had left his or her backpack, which means it could be anyone, his or her. So you're giving an option. Now it could be used for abbreviations like without, W-O. CO which is care of, AC which is air conditioning and that's where you use a slash. Now slashes can also be used to note when there's a connection or conflict between two words. The pro-lie, pro-choice, that means you can use either of them, probably it means the same. The designer often works in his bonus room or home you know, office. Then your slash is also used with numbers, fractions and dates. Now let's look at your parentheses and brackets. Use parentheses to enclose information that clarifies or is used as an aside. Like he gave me a nice bonus and I'm trying to elaborate $500 and I'm writing this in parentheses. He finally answered after taking five minutes to think. So that's an additional information that he did not understand the question. Similarly, please read the analysis. You'll be amazed. That's an additional 
you know information and that's an independent sentence that's why it's ending with a full stop joe and his trusty mart was always welcome so we are basically talking about joe and this is additional information that's why we keep a verb also singular now where else do we use this when he got home it was already dark outside he fixed dinner so your commas are more likely to follow parentheses than precede them so the the first form is a wrong way when he got home it was already dark outside now this phrase or a clause in in your bracket um, in your parentheses is a description of when he got home and then you put a comma because you have another you know clause which says he fixed dinner so that's independent of the previous one so brackets are far less you know common than parentheses four score and seven today we had say 87 years ago so when we see them we know they've been added by someone else they used to explain or comment on the quotation they are rarely used so that's all about punctuation i hope uh, this whole video was very useful because punctuation plays a very important role in you getting a good band in your writing because you know punctuation depicts you know technically how your writing is whether you have full stops you have commas otherwise how would the examiner understand which clause is separated from the other so you have to ensure because punctuation is the first impression of your writing you have to ensure that you do not make punctuation mistakes to get a high band in your writings thank you